Tonight's first guest is Brittany. Brittany, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Vic. Well, thanks for coming on. We appreciate your time. Brittany, please give us a brief bio on yourself. I am a 32-year-old mom, stay-at-home mom, and I take care of a house all day and dogs. Yeah. What's harder to keep track of and keep in line, your kid or the dog? The dog, definitely. (laughs) I can relate to that. (laughs) <laughs> now, I understand. You live in New Jersey now, Brittany, but you grew up in Virginia, and that's where your encounter happened. How long have you been living in Virginia before that encounter happened? I just went back for a visit, and within two months, I stayed there for two months, and that's when my encounter happened. But I basically lived there probably since I was about eight or nine. So that was a good amount of time. Yeah, definitely. If that's the case, were you about ready to pack up the next day after the encounter and head right back to Jersey? Or? That's how I was feeling. <laughs> I was definitely a little out of my element, like the whole night. I'm like, did I really see this? But yeah, I was definitely ready to go back to like the city, lights, yeah, no woods. Oh, I bet you were. But you do understand now that encounters happen in cities too, don't you? Of course. After listening to your podcast, Of course, I realize that they happen and not even just like backwoods places. That's right. Yeah, they happen all over. Are you one of those people who would rather not know about things like dogmen being out there? Or do you think it's better to be forewarned? I think it's better to be forewarned. I like to know what I'm getting myself into. So if I know something like that exists, um, I would definitely handle myself in a certain way. So definitely, it's better to know that they exist. Yeah, that's how I feel about it, too. What were your thoughts on the existence of cryptids and other things like that that go bump in the night before you had your encounter? Did you know about Dogman before it happened? I did. I am a big fan of paranormal shows. I watch all these shows on cryptids, and I love to watch them, but I never thought that I would have my own experience, I guess. Yeah, you never do until it happens. That's how it normally goes. There are a lot of people who would never share an experience like the one you had in a public way like this. What made you decide to come forward and do this? I heard a show, one of your earlier shows, and this woman was, I guess, in Danville, um, Virginia. It was two hours away from where I had seen mine. And In the back of my head, I said, okay, if someone comes forward and describes what I saw, like use the exact words, I'll come forward and I'll tell about my experience. But like not before, like I have to hear somebody else say it. Was it comforting to you to find out about her experience or more disconcerting? A little bit of both. I I felt validated. But also, like, I really did see kind of the stuff that nightmares are made out of. I definitely saw something. Yeah, I'd say you did. You definitely did. The place where your encounter happened is very sparsely populated. Just how remote is it, though? It's well off the beaten path. It's, like, up a road that's barely big enough for, like, two golf carts. I don't know how people drive this like every day, even when it's snowing, but this area, like you get off the main road and you start going up a hill, there's curves, there's like not any lines on the road and it's basically forest on either side. So it's a dirt road then? Almost. It's paved, but it's very, very isolated. Yeah, sounds like it must be. You told us about finding out about that lady's encounter that was about two hours away, but did you ever find out any of the particulars about what happened to her? I know that her mom had seen something, and she said, I guess it's my word, kangaroo, as soon as I heard that word be used, I'm like, oh my god, that's what kind of perked my ears up, and I'm like, okay, maybe I didn't... Just maybe I wasn't imagining it. Maybe it really did happen. 
Yeah, it would be nice if it was just your imagination, bud. Unfortunately, it sounds like that wasn't the case. Have you been alone in the woods since you had that encounter, Brittany? No, I have not. No, I have not. And I guess my experience changed me in a way. I will not go out in... uh, like when it's dusk, I will, I, yeah, I try to stay away from the woods now. Well, I can understand why you would do that, but do you think someday down the road, you might be able to overcome this and head back into the woods and enjoy yourself? I definitely think eventually I'll get there, but for right now, I think I'm good in a car on a road that's paved and there's people around. I think I'm good just out of the woods. Yeah, well, a lot of eyewitnesses feel that way. How much time did you spend in the woods before you had that encounter, though? I would go camping. I would go uh, fishing. Um, I'm not like a, a, an outdoors girl by any means, but I would go with my family. So, I mean, it wasn't a super big, like, oh my gosh, my life is turned upside down. Like, But it was like, oh, man, like, I'm going to think twice about going to this fishing spot. Wow, that really is a shame. In your own good time, I don't want you to rush, of course, but I do hope sometime down the road you can start to fish again and camp again and just enjoy the outdoors the way that you used to at one time. I mean, you're so young. You've got so much life ahead of you. It really would be a travesty if you never did go out and enjoy it again. That'd be horrible. I know. I hope this passes eventually. Like, I'm good in the winter months. Like, I'll ski. I'll do the fun stuff in the winter months. But when it's, like, spring, summer, like, early fall, yeah, I'm good. So you're okay to go out there in the wintertime. Well, that's a good beginning. If you've spent all that time out in the woods, camping and fishing and doing all those other things, it's not going to give you the warm and fuzzies, but I can all but guarantee... On more occasions than you would ever even guess, these guys have been watching you, monitoring you, following you. You never were harmed then, so don't lose sight of the fact that they've had all these opportunities to come and get you if they wanted to, but they obviously didn't. I'm never going to say dogmen are safe to be around, because you name the species whatever, you're going to have dangerous examples of that type of animal. So why should dogmen be any different? But, if you think about all the dogmen that quite possibly have been watching you over the years when you've been in the woods, before you knew about them being out there and had that encounter, none of them wanted to harm you. If they did want to harm you, you would have been harmed. So, please keep that in mind. Exactly. I don't feel like they're trying to harm me at all. As physically capable as they are, if they wanted to harm you, you would be harmed. That's all there is to it. If you've had a Dogman encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest on one of my two Bigfoot shows, please go to mybigfootsighting.com. All right, Brittany, please tell us about your encounter now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. Okay. So this happened... Early November of 2019, I had taken a couple months off from work and I went to stay with my aunt in Virginia just to like wedding plan and kind of be off the grid. Um, It was nice. And so yeah, early November and I went to the food store. I went to Kroger. This was probably like maybe an hour away, depending on how you drive. And on my way back, I get off the main road and then I slowly start down this road. There's no line in the center. It's just, it's just a a long road. And I was distracted by a pair of eyes and these eyes were higher than a deer because that's what I originally thought. And I'm like, wait, I had to ask myself, I'm like, no, I'm like, a deer's eyes are not supposed to be that high. And so like I'm driving, I'm not trying to investigate. I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm just trying to get home. And I'm noticing that this is way taller than 
my truck like taller than a hay bale, like a rolled hay bale. Um, these eyes are really high. And then my mind immediately, immediately went to a kangaroo, but not just a kangaroo, a kangaroo with like dog features, the way it was like hunched over and the way its arms were articulated. Like it just, it didn't, I think my mind was trying to make sense of what it could be. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm not seeing this. There's no kangaroos in Southern Virginia. There's no kangaroos like at all in the United States. I mean, minus the zoos. So I'm going by this and I didn't smell anything. I didn't hear anything. I just felt like, ooh, I just got to get home. I don't know if it was trying to make me scared. And I know that's kind of the way that they operate. They just want you to know that they're there, which they definitely did. So I'm driving by this and I think it was watching me as I was driving up. Like, I don't think it followed me home. I don't think that it was out to get me, but I just know how high this thing was. And I knew if it really, really wanted to, it could get me no problem. I mean, the muscles, I could just see, you know, kangaroo has muscles. It's very powerful. And then you add on the dog traits. It had pointy ears. It just looked like a mixture of both. And it looked very, very powerful. So, yeah, like I said, I was not trying to stop and investigate. I was on my way home. I was trying to get home safely. And I didn't feel anything driving home. But the whole time, I'm like, did I just see that? I wasn't sure. I felt very uncertain, I guess. I doubted myself. And when I did get home, I was... I was hustling a little bit with the bags, trying to get them all in. I was trying to take in all of the area because, like I said, like I didn't think it followed me home, but I know these things are fast. I know that they're all over, and I was not trying to get involved in any, like, I guess, nothing happening. When I did get home, I'm like, you guys will never guess what I saw, and it was kind of pushed off as a joke and I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking. Like you shouldn't drive and any of that. I was just coming home from a shopping trip and this happened. And I guess until I heard the podcast of the girl about her mom seeing a kangaroo, I didn't really start putting, I I thought I was just crazy. I thought like my mind was just seeing things like, you know, it's, it's dark out in November early, but I just thought it was, I I don't know. I, I, my brain was trying to make it to where I guess it wasn't like going through like a shock or something. So I had to make sense of it some way. How many people did you tell about that experience? I told my, probably about five people. I told my aunt, my husband, and then my three cousins. There's nothing worse than having an eyewitness who has an experience like that. And they reach out to friends and family and everyone just laughs at them. No one takes them seriously. I call that a prison without any walls, but did it strain your relationship with your husband when he laughed at you? Not at all. We laugh at each other all the time. There's some things he's told me and I guess I've laughed at him and we joke a lot and I don't know if he was, this wasn't the time he was supportive, but he was like a kangaroo. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like a kangaroo. And I'm like, I know this sounds crazy. I feel crazy. But I mean, eventually like when I told him about this podcast, I made him listen to this podcast the whole way through And as soon as this girl said that her mom saw this kangaroo, that's when he's like, oh, my God. He's like, are you serious? And I'm like, I told you. I told you I saw something. So he believes you now. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Oh, good. That has to help quite a bit. How far were you from home when you saw it? 
I was probably maybe 10 minutes, 15 at the most, from when I saw this. Yeah, it's like pretty much a straight run, but it's all curvy. It's like literally you get off the main road and then you are going up like a mountain and there's windy like turns and everything. There's no street lights. It's very dark. Like their land backs up to um, the Smith Mountain Lake Dam. That's like five miles away from their house. So it's very desolate. I mean, compared to Jersey, to me, it's a very, very like desolate area. You could take a hike out in the woods and not see anybody or hear anybody for miles. So you were close to home when this happened. For anyone listening to the show tonight who thinks that you just saw a small tree and misidentified it, Brittany, what would you say to them about that? I don't know. Maybe you have to reevaluate where that tree is or, you know, where I've tried to make sense of this. And it's the middle of a field. There's nothing in this field. Um, There's barely any hay bales. I don't know. Maybe sometimes it's not just your imagination. Maybe it's actually something out there. Well, that right there precludes a chance it could have been a small tree. So much for that. How much trouble have you had coming to terms with that experience? I'm still having a hard time getting a beat on that. It's definitely made me more cautious. I guess maybe even afraid of the things that could be out there. I know I definitely saw something. I know it was not something that they teach you in science books and high school. There's nothing that teaches you about this at all. It's definitely made me more thoughtful to, I guess, the paranormal. I guess that's what that would be considered. Well, having an experience like that would normally have that effect on you. Have you had any trouble with nightmares due to that experience? Not really any nightmares. I guess just the general, like, I think something's coming after me. I'm in the woods. Something's, like, there. That's about it. As far as, like, like nightmare dreams about, like, dogmen and stuff, no, thank God, because I don't think that would be fun. But, yeah, just, like, the general, like, something's out there and I have to be careful kind of dreams. Well, that's a good thing. Thank goodness. And I hope you never do have any nightmares about them. Well, it's about time for us to get out of here, Brittany. But before we do, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? Not really. I just hope this, I don't know, maybe gives somebody else, maybe this could be their way of telling about their experience. Because, I don't know, until I heard somebody else say something, I would have kept quiet. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage to come out and talk about an experience like that. Got to give them credit for doing that. And, of course, have to give you as well. So, I'm really impressed that you have. But having said that, I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing the details of that experience with us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks again so much, and have a great night. Tonight's second guest is Brandon. Brandon, welcome to the show. Hi, Vic. Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your time. Brandon, please give us a brief bio on yourself. I am a construction supervisor, and I'm from Indiana. Married, got four kids, and I also have recently started looking into these weird crypto phenomenons and other instances that people have had kind of my experience led me into looking into these type of things so i kind of started out last year doing a podcast into this stuff and recently i stumbled across this podcast and i've always kind of kept my story to myself because the stigma that involves of not really talking about these things but i got to the point where I can't expect other people to talk about their encounters if I'm too afraid to talk about mine. So that's kind of why I reached out to you and wanted to share my experience. Well, it goes without saying, we're so glad you decided to do that. So thank you. And thank you for having a platform for people like me to come on here and talk about it. Well, you're welcome. Before you have the encounter you're going to tell us about tonight, Brandon, 
Would you describe yourself as having been a skeptic or open-minded? I've always been a skeptic that wants to believe, if that makes any plausible sense to someone. Basically, I've always been interested in paranormal, monsters, whatever. I grew up as a kid that loved the X-Files. So I was familiar with all sorts of stuff, but I never really took it as true. I just more or less thought it was just made up stuff or people would saw Ghost or Bigfoot or something like that. The Loch Ness Monster. I was like, oh, it'd be awesome if that stuff was real, but I never really took it as real. There's nothing wrong with being a skeptic. In a lot of cases, it's a good thing. Have you become less of a skeptic after having that experience? To an extent, yes. I still remain skeptical on a lot of things just because I don't know if it's me personally just not wanting to think about the possibility that these things are real, but more so in the last couple of years, I've opened up to the possibility that there are a lot more instances where people encounter things that aren't necessarily misidentifications, that they're actually seeing what they say they're seeing. Well, I don't need to tell you whether it's convenient or not for them to be real. They are. They're definitely out there and you know that now, now that you had that experience. And speaking of that, do you live what you'd consider to be a compromised life now that you've had that encounter? I wouldn't say compromised. It's always been in the back of my head and I just kind of compartmentalized it to where I never really thought about it. It wasn't up until within the last year and a half to two years that I really kind of mentioned it to someone just because, again, there's that stigma of people thinking that you're crazy or something or you're a liar or anything like that. And that's definitely not what I'm about. So I just didn't want to talk about it, but I don't think it's affected me to the point like it has with some others. And I know they've struggled with it really bad. And for me, I just kind of, it made me start looking into things more, but it wasn't so much to where I was open about it. It was just more or less, it piqued my interest. But at the same time, I've always tried to rationalize it and like, understand what I saw and maybe what I saw wasn't where I actually saw, but I feel like whatever it was, I'm trying to rationalize it into like a logical sense. And I've just gotten to the point to whatever it was, it was not logical. I cannot explain it away. So I start to open up more about it to accept that what I saw is what I saw. Well, I'm glad you decided to open up like that eventually. Isn't it a shame you have to worry about how family and friends are going to respond if you try to tell them about the experience? That's horrible. People are not very open-minded. It doesn't seem like a lot of them are shut off. And the first time you bring up something that isn't what would be considered normal by most people, they're looked at funny or laughed at or ridiculed. or And that's why a lot of people that have these sort of experiences won't say anything about it because they don't want to deal with the aftermath of that. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's understandable that they would do that. They would hold those experiences to themselves, but it really is a shame they have to worry about that sort of thing. Did seeing definitive proof that dogmen exist have any effects on aspects of your life that most people wouldn't expect? It's made me a little bit more concerned with being out at nighttime and even so much in the day. Like, I'm not one to be afraid of the dark or anything like that but where i live now it's not too far from where the encounter i had was and when i have to go out and deal with our goats or our chickens or whatever at nighttime i'm always make sure i got my phone light on or something just in the back of my mind there's always not so much like fear but i'm always a little bit more cautious of what i'm doing just because you never know at this point what's around the corner once bitten twice shy yeah, that's understandable. How close exactly are you to the place where that encounter happened? Maybe within four miles. Oh, that's close. Has anything happened after that encounter that makes you think it might have followed you home? Nothing that I can really say so. There's been other issues here and there, but it's nothing that I've ever seen or experienced. We've had at our house now, since we moved back here in 2020, we've had random 
animals be killed and they're not eaten or they're just killed. We've had rabbits that are just laying out killed. We've had other animals that have, like our birds, our chickens have been killed. It's weird because nothing's been eating on them. They're just killed and they're just laying out there. So I don't know what that would be. That's like, to me, if it was a predator or a coyote or something like that, you'd have thought it would have took it away, eaten it, not just killed and left it. Yeah, I agree. If it was a predator, you don't expect them to just leave it there. So it does make you wonder. Might have been a Sasquatch. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, often thought about how we don't really know what's around. So anytime I go out there, especially with my kids out there or anything like that, it's I've always got that doubt in the back of my mind or a little bit of paranoia, I guess, that there's cornfields around us. We don't know what's going to come walking out of the cornfield. We don't know what's going to come stepping over from behind our barn. So there's always that little bit of fear in the back of my mind that there's something out there. You're only human. It's only natural you'd feel that way. You found out about an eyewitness who had an encounter just a few miles from where you live. What can you tell us about their experience? Well, I come across your show and someone recommended this episode 403 of Dogman Encounters. So I listened to it and he happened to be from the same town as Peru, Indiana. And I haven't been able to actually talk to him or find out who he was or whatever. But his experience, it's not too far from the area of where mine was. And obviously his was back in 1990, but mine happened in 2007. So it was a 17 year difference, but I thought it was strange that from what I saw and just knowing that obviously someone else experienced something similar 17 years beforehand, it really piqued my interest because again, I wrote off for almost 15 years of what I saw wasn't really what I saw it had to have been something else it had to be something explainable and knowing that other people have seen the same type of thing in the same general area really made me start looking into things more. It sure would be nice if you could explain it away, but you saw what you saw and that's all there is to it. Yes. All right, Brandon, please tell us about your encounter now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. Okay. It was in February of 2007. I worked night shift at a paper warehousing place to where we stocked paper for a company. And the day shift boss was on vacation that week. And our boss decided she did not want to be there all night. So she let us leave about an hour and a half to two hours early. So it would have been about 4.30 to 5 o'clock in the morning. And as we're leaving, there's just several of us that worked on there. I believe there was like maybe four of us. And we left the warehouse. I get on the main road and then I turned down the county road. Now, one of my coworkers, he was in front of me and he was driving too. And he was probably about a thousand feet in front. Now on the north side is more or less just farmland, but on the south side of this area, it used to be a deer preserve. So they had big, tall 10 foot fencing that ran all the way down around this corner. So we were driving down this road and we get up to an area where there's some woods, but it's not like a super big wooded area, but there's a decent amount of woods to the South. So it'd be on my driver's side. And I notice his taillights, he hits his brakes. So they light up and I see him swerve off to the northern end of the road. So basically he kind of went down into the grass and shot back out and kept on driving. And the first thing I'm thinking of is what is this guy doing? Like did a deer run out in front of him or is he just not paying attention? This was back in 2007. So it's not like someone had been on their smartphone scrolling through things, not paying attention. Like it's before that time. And as I start to get closer to where he was, I see this black figure in the middle of the road, but it's walking and it's in an upright position, but it's kind of leaning forward. And the first thing I thought of as I'd gotten close to it 
was I thought it was a tall person wrapped in a big black blanket because I couldn't see a head and I didn't see any arms, but I could definitely see an upper body with legs. Now I didn't, I don't remember. I can't process what the feet look like. I didn't, obviously this all happened within a few seconds. So I'm just trying to figure out why someone walking in the middle of the road in the middle of the night. So as I got closer, I too had to hit my brakes and go over to the side of the road to avoid whatever this was but i had slowed down to the point to where i was almost stopped and the thing was walking in a swaying pattern almost like i describe it as when you see those blowers at a car dealership basically the air blows them up and they just sway in the wind that's kind of how the sway of this thing was when it was walking it would sway from side to side like as it took steps and it was still leaning forward quite a bit Now, I'm driving a 1998 Ford Explorer, and the height from the driver's seat, obviously the window, I kind of measured things to try and figure out distance, and it's about five and a half feet, roughly. Whatever was walking past my driver's side window, I never saw the top of it, and it was still leaning forward, so I'm guesstimating that it's probably over seven feet tall. Again, I did not see arms or a head, and I couldn't see any actual details of the body other than just a black mass and two thick legs and as i got behind the vehicle my taillights illuminated it and i could definitely see two really thick legs as it took two steps and then at that point i trumped on the gas and got out of there because i don't know what's going on like nothing was making sense at this point well my co-worker had pulled into a parking lot further down the road and he'd start to turn around so i pulled in next to him and as i rolled down my window to talk he was clearly scared his eyes were all bulged out he's yelling profanities and asking if i saw it whatever what was it i told him i'm not sure he said it didn't have a head which i can confirm i did not see a head either and We just have no idea what this thing was, so I decided we should probably go back and look. Just because clearly this is not something that normally would happen, and me being somewhat of curiosity, I I would like to know what I just saw. So he decided he would follow behind me, so I went out in front, and we start driving back down the road, and it's only maybe a quarter mile down this road from where we'd pulled off at, so it's not too far. And I see a black dog looking figure laying in the middle of the road. And as we approached, I can make out more. I was like, well, this looks like a dog. So the first thing I'm thinking is, well, maybe he hit a dog or I don't know. I I didn't hit anything. I know I didn't, but my brain won't process why there's now a dog laying in the middle of the road. It's clearly not as big as whatever was walking, so I didn't put two and two together that this could have been the same thing. It just, again, like it's all happened so quickly that I just couldn't think straight, basically. So I start to get out of my vehicle because clearly it looks like there's an injured animal in the middle of the road. And there's no real way of going around unless, again, we drive off into the grassy area. And... As I start to get out, my coworker decides to start yelling at me to get back in because we don't know what's walking down the road. We don't know what this thing is. What am I doing? Calling me crazy, whatever. As then I start to walk towards this creature, its head sits up and looks back at me. Now, it was laying directly across the road, not like long ways, but basically like as long as it could from side to side. So it made it to where it was hard to get around it one way or the other. And it was facing the opposite direction from where I was walking. So it was looking the way we had been driving. And as it turned around, its eyes were glowing yellow at me. And I think that it's the eye shine from the headlights. That's how my brain processes because every animal, obviously, their eyes will glow once it hits the headlights because it's still dark outside. And as we are watching, like he's still in his vehicle, I'm walking, I stop because the thing sets its head up, and as the eyes are going, it growls at me. It's a really deep, rumbly growl. 
So I stopped dead in my tracks. And basically, this thing decides it's going to stand up, but it's not trying to stand up like a normal dog. It stands up on its hind legs. I did not notice any of the hands or anything like that. It looked to me like it still was a normal dog. It didn't have like fingers. The legs didn't look humanoid or didn't have arm. Like it still looked like a normal dog, but I've never seen a dog just stand up on its back legs like a person. And it didn't stand up to where it looked like it was having any real issues to stand up on its hind legs. But when it stood up, it kind of hobbled around and fell back down and then it trotted off on all fours or what appeared to be all fours down into the grass area where the trees are. Now where that area is, is where that 10 foot fence would be. So I'm not sure how it would have completely just went down there and disappeared, but we never seen it once it went in there. So I don't know if it popped the fence, went through a fence, climbed under a fence or just straight up disappeared, but we couldn't see it anymore. And as we noticed that it was gone he decided he would actually get out of his vehicle and he walked up to me and we're trying to figure out what just happened because clearly that is not normal like we don't know what this is from what i saw it looked like a typical wolf style body like a german shepherd type body and head but its fur was really puffy almost like a chow so just laying there, I thought it was just a normal dog, just a big dog. But when it stood up and it looked at me, I just didn't feel like this was normal, obviously, because again, dogs don't stand up on two legs. And if they do, it's, I don't know. So I'm trying to process everything that is going on. So as we're talking about this, I happen to notice down by my foot, there's a field mouse. And I see mice every once in a while run across the road here and there. We live out in the country, obviously. There's fields and everything around. But this was in the winter. And there obviously wasn't really any fields going on. Everything had been harvested. Everything had been cut down. But it's just standing there, and it's washing its face with its two front paws. So it's in an upright position, but it's kind of sitting with its tail behind it. And it's taking its two front paws and just wiping its face and rubbing its head and around its ears like it was cleaning itself so i nudged it with my foot just to try and see if it would like scamper off or anything like that and it didn't really matter basically it just kept cleaning itself and as it was cleaning itself it kind of creeped me out even more that there's a mouse standing here with us if we're having a conversation right between us, like it's involved in our conversation. Obviously, it's not speaking to us or whatever, but it's not afraid of us and has no problem that I just touched it. And it just goes about its business like it's no big deal. It's just going to keep cleaning itself. The whole time we were there, I don't know how to describe it other than it just felt weird. Like the whole situation obviously was strange, but like the air itself just didn't feel normal. Obviously, it was winter. It was kind of cold, brisk out. But, like, just in this area, I don't know how to describe it other than it didn't feel normal. Like, it wouldn't feel like when I was talking to him further down the road, it was almost, I don't know, it was like a heaviness in this area that we're in. And that's the only thing I can really think of is how to describe is a weird heaviness in this area. But we decided that we're going to go about our own ways so he went towards his house and i went across the highway over towards my house and i went to bed when i got home because obviously i worked third shift so i wanted to get some sleep and when i'd woken up the next morning i kind of drew a sketch of what i'd saw and then i got online and i started browsing through old forums or whatever for like cryptids or any type of dog, werewolf, whatever type things, because at the time I'd never even heard of a dog man. And I'd scan this photo that I drew into a group and asked if anyone's ever seen anything like this. And someone says it looks like a Michigan dog man. So that's when I started looking into, well, what's a Michigan dog man? And then I started seeing more things and 
learned of the Beast of Bray Road encounter and some of the other stuff. And it, I went back to work, and I don't remember if it was this, the following night or that could have been the weekend. It was two nights later. But I just know the next time we went to work, I went up to him with what I had drawn and was at our bench where we'd all set before work started. And the other people that worked with us started laughing once I'd showed him what I drew and was talking about what it was. So he pulls me to the side and said that I need to shut up talking about what we saw because he doesn't want people thinking we're crazy or he's crazy or anything like that. So anything that happened, he's just going to deny and say that he didn't see anything because he doesn't want to be known as someone seeing crazy monsters or whatever. So needed to just drop it and not talk about it. So that was honestly the last time I even really brought it up to anyone because I didn't want to be telling people a story and being thinking that I'm lying about it because the guy that also saw it is now saying he didn't see anything because he didn't want to be involved in it. So for 15 years, I pretty much kept that to myself up until... I would say in the winter of 2021 and I just so happened to randomly tell a coworker who didn't laugh, but didn't really acknowledge much of it. And I kind of felt a little bit better when I mentioned it just because for so long, I'm not really talking about it. And then it got me wanting to look into more details and find other people who could have possibly had the same type of experience that I did, but I didn't know how to go about doing that. So I just started looking around and trying to come about more information of what I was looking for. I started watching these dog man documentaries and basically come to the point to where I can't rationalize basically what I had saw. So it's almost as if I have to accept the fact that what I saw was actually what I saw because for so long I just said it was obviously it was a dog. Maybe he was playing with this mouse. He was jumping around. That's why he looked taller and maybe he was hurt. That's why he tried to stand on his back legs and his front legs wouldn't work. And he was actually hit and he was messing with this mouse and the mouse was traumatized. I just, whatever rational explanation that I could come up with, that's what I basically said happened all those years and that to me even sounds just as weird and unbelievable as my actual story does but I don't know how else to explain it other than I saw what I saw and to this day I don't know 100% what it was but what it was was not normal and that's just where I'm at today. Isn't it a shame that you can't just openly talk about an experience like that with anyone that you want to without fear of being ridiculed? Yeah, that's, it's one of those things to where it's very taboo, I guess, for a lot of people. And I think there's a lot of others who've actually had these experiences themselves that even if you were to bring it up that you had a similar experience, that they're still afraid to even say they had one because, again, they don't want that ridicule that they're going to get from the mainstream of people because that's just the mindset that everyone's in, that these things aren't real. And anyone that sees them are clearly crazy. At this point, I'm not worried about the backlash. People can say what they want to say. I know what I saw. If you believe me or if you don't believe me, it really doesn't matter because in the back of my mind, I know what I saw and now I know. That's right. Now you do know. You're about four miles from home when you had that encounter, but how far from the warehouse was that? Probably two miles. It's just on the outskirts of town. It's on the northern part of town, so... Not too far from where the actual county fairgrounds is. It's on that fairgrounds road that we have. And again, that whole area is a big deer preserve. Well, it used to be, and now it's not. The whole area is not the deer preserve. They used to have scheduled hunting and stuff out there. but So that whole area is basically fenced off, and it's a big two to four square mile area that they had completely 10 foot fenced all the way around. So... No one really can know what was in or out there. Obviously, it was all wooded and everything else. So access to it was very limited. Is there much in the way of moving water in that area? 
just less than a mile to the north is a the Hill River, and just about another mile or a mile and a half to the south is the Wabash River. And both run right through Miami County. So it's kind of right in the dead center of both of them. I see. Well, if that's the case, having the Wabash right there and that deer preserve, that's a dogman sanctuary then. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm thinking is just this whole area in general is like a prime spot for any type of animal that we're not aware of or any type of creature just because we have two sources of water. There's a lot of farmland, but there's also a lot of wooded areas and undisturbed areas. So it's definitely a place to where anything could be out there that we're not 100% sure about. Oh, I'd say so. Yeah, that's the perfect place for a dogman to hang out. When you saw that big creature walking down the road, swaying side to side the way it was, would you describe its movements as being smooth or jerky? It was kind of a smooth but unnatural look. It didn't look like it was having trouble walking. It just didn't look like a normal stride of anything that I can relate to. It just, it was like wispy type, I guess. Like it would just kind of flow with the wind. It didn't look, it didn't look real. I guess that would be the way, like, what you would see something walking. It just had too much of a sway to it to be normal. I don't, I guess that's the only way I can come, come about it is it just, it didn't look like it was jagged or, twitching or anything like that it just was just moving very unnatural i must have really gotten your motor running when you saw that yeah i i relay it when i tell the story i'm trying to revisualize it and everything and i'm sitting here thinking about it i was like i there's no way i can explain this in the details that i need to without because i can visualize it i can see it but there's really no way of really describing it because seeing it is the only way to actually understand what I'm saying. So it's hard to, hard to translate that over. Well, I'm sure it is. How would you describe the contour of its torso? It was round and thick. It almost was, um, I didn't see like muscle mass or anything like that, but it, it had like what you would think of, like it widened up towards the top. Like it looked like it would have, should have had shoulders and arms, obviously. Cause the legs were thick and then it kind of got a little bit narrower and then it thickened back up. And then as it was leaning forward, I could only see like a top black and then it just stopped. So whatever was walking, like I didn't see arms and I didn't see a head, but clearly there should have been something in that area where arms and a head would be, but there was just, there was nothing. So I don't understand how a set of legs and torso are just kind of walking in the road without being able to see a head or arms or anything like that on the top part of it to me is just, I don't know. Like I said, that it's hard for me to describe this. And as I talk about it, the skeptic in me is like, this cannot be true. There's no way you saw this, but I'm not the only one that saw it. If the guy that I'd worked with had not said that, something's walking didn't have a head and he like he confirmed what i had saw i would have probably wrote it off as i just didn't get a good look at it but the fact that he saw exactly what i saw reaffirmed to me that okay we got to go back and look at this thing because this is not right there's something wrong there's something weird going on and for whatever reason i wanted to go back and make sure that i saw what i saw because what i saw is too fantastical to be true it's too fantastical to be true, but unfortunately it is. How close did you get to it? From what I can remember, I'm pretty sure my mirror actually bumped into the side of it as I was trying to drive past it. So it was really, really close. And like I said, I it was taller than the window of my vehicle. I mean, my vehicle was probably about five and a half feet. So... I never saw the top of it, even though it was hunched forward, because it was leaning forward by quite a bit when it was walking. And with it hunched over and being, it had to have been close to the top of it, it would have been almost seven foot still leaning over. So standing completely upright, it had to have been well over seven feet. Is there any way due to lighting it being so dark out and 
Sometimes being close makes it harder to see something. Is there any way it could have just been hiding its arm somehow and its head, and that's why you couldn't see them? It's possible because the way I've always thought about it and described it was it looked like something was wrapped, like the upper part of it was wrapped, like wrapped around in like this black, I said a cloak or a blanket, like it was, obviously it was winter. So my first thought process when I could see it in the distance with my headlights was obviously there's a person strolling down the road, stumbling down the road, whatever you want to like however my brain was processing it and they're wrapped in like a big black blanket but as i got closer I was like well this is obviously too big to be a person and as i went around it it was definitely too big to be a person but it is possible that the upper part of it was wrapped with something black but it's the same color of the legs and everything like it was all the same black figure like a black or a dark gray and it wasn't like a silhouette or anything like that, like they talk about seeing through things or anything like that. Like it was solid because I hit it with headlights. It was next to my vehicle. I'm pretty sure it kind of bumped into the mirror and my back tail lights illuminated it. And you could see between the legs as it stepped. So whatever was there was blocking off. Like it was solid. It was blocking off the area as it walked past. It wasn't anything that, wasn't actually there. Obviously, it was, it was solid mass. That sure is a hard one to explain. When you rolled up next to it, did it ever make any movements that gave you the impression that it took notice of you? No, that's one of the things that I've often thought about is it didn't try and stop when his vehicle went around it, I guess. I didn't obviously see it at that point, but if he had to swerve to miss it, it was clearly continuing to walk in the middle of the road and it didn't try to avoid me either. It just kept going in the same direction that I was and I had to avoid it. And I'm thinking to myself, if I would have just stopped with it, it kept walking right directly into it. Like, cause it didn't even try and like step away from where I'm trying to get around it. It just kept going in the same straight pattern. But obviously, like I said, it was swaying as it was walking, but it was still going in the same it wasn't going from like side of the road to the side of the road. It was still in the center of the road, but its upper body would sway to one side and its upper body would take another step would sway to the other side. It was like just rocking as it was taking steps. I can only imagine what it must have been like to see that. You said that you never saw its head. Is it possible that its head was down in front of its shoulders so far that its shoulders concealed it somehow? It's possible. Again, like I said, I don't. With being in the vehicle, and obviously I couldn't see the top of it as I walked past, I don't necessarily know what the upper part of it looked like. I never really saw that upper part. I just saw what I could see through the window as I'm trying to drive past this thing, still trying to figure out exactly what it is. Because at that point, my brain is just scrambling because it's all happened within like a 10 second window. And you're trying to rationalize something completely what I would, I guess, would call crazy happening that, and you're trying to process, is this really happening? So I've always kind of regretted not, not fully stopping and trying to get a good look at it. But at the same time, that fight or flight fear comes into play. And I just kind of wanted to not figure out exactly what it was standing literally a foot from me. No, please don't second guess yourself. You did the right thing by getting out of there. What makes you so sure it was a dog man, though, if you never saw its head, arms, or hands? That's where I'm not 100% sure of what was walking. When I first came up on it, it was the same creature, because when we went back to see what was walking is when we saw the dog. And then the dog stands back up on two legs and then tries to walk off. And then it seems like it couldn't do that. So it went back down on all fours, but it's two front paws. I don't feel like they were actually on the ground. I felt like it kind of like hunched down, like hunkered down, leaning forward, kind of like how that thing was leaning forward. And then went down into the grassy tree area. That to me is, I don't know how to like, obviously whatever was walking was a lot bigger than the dog, the dog creature, or just we'll call it the dog 
it was bigger than the normal sized dog, but it was nowhere near as big as whatever was walking. So I don't know how to correlate one and the other. I don't know if they were the same thing. I don't know if they're all three related, if they're all just weird instances. I just know that there was no dog in the middle of the road about two minutes before we went back down there. So I don't know where the dog came from. And I don't know where that creature went, whatever was walking, because it was not there. But now there's a dog in the same general area. Well, unfortunately, it sounds like there are a lot of questions to that experience that you're never going to have the answers to. I wish we did, but we probably never will. When you saw that smaller dog stand up on its hind legs and run away, how far were you from the bigger one at that point? It was probably within the same 50 to 100 feet from where the original thing was walking. Again, it's nighttime and there's just wood, so it's hard to know exactly the exact spot. But I would say it was when, within 100 feet of where the thing walking was that this creature was laying down. Again, to me, it looked like a normal dog. I didn't see like the typical description of like a dog man would have like almost humanoid type hands with fingers like this looked like it still had its paws and but when it stood up on its hind legs it didn't look like a dog trying to stand up on its hind legs like it stood up like it would normally be on hind legs and then went back down on all fours so that's that's where i'm my brain gets confused because if this was really a dog why did it look like it was okay standing on its back legs Probably because it was a dog man. <laughs> I can understand why you would try to qualify it and second guess yourself, but from what you've told me about what it did, it sure sounds to me like it was a smaller dog man. As far as its eyes go, do you see any way that a normal dog or wolf's eyes could have glowed the way its eyes did? The only thing I related to the glowing of the eyes was basically the headlights hitting it. They were glowing a yellow color. And again, I don't know if that's just from the headlights or not. That's how I always wrote it off as well. Obviously, the eyes are glowing because it's, it's an animal and the eyes are reflecting from eye shine. But they were really bright. That's all I can really just say. Like, I don't know if that's typical of an animal with headlights within 50 feet from it. Makes their eyes really glow, really bright yellow. But these were glowing like a bright yellow color. Well, when you consider the fact it stood up the way it did, I can't see how it could have been just a dog or a wolf because there are dogmen that look as unassuming as just your run-of-the-mill dog or your run-of-the-mill wolf that has this ability to stand up on its back legs and do it in a way that makes it look totally normal like it does it all the time, probably because it does. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where I always struggled with it because... As much as I didn't want to consider the fact that what I saw was obviously a dog man or before I knew what a dog man even was, like that night, I was like, first thing anyone would think of is like werewolf because that's the mainstream thing pushed out there from movies and everything else or werewolves. I didn't have a feeling the fear from it if that makes any sense like i wasn't afraid even when it stood up i wasn't like afraid of it as i thought it was going to stand up and run at me it seemed like it was more wanting to get out of there like it growled at me to stop coming towards it and it stood up the other direction it didn't stand up towards me it stood up with its back towards me like it was going away from me i felt like if it was actually wanting to attack me i'm only 15 feet from it, it could have stood up and lunged at me and there'd probably been nothing I could have done. It made it pretty clear that it wanted to get away from you, but I'm sure the pucker factor was way up there still, and understandably so. Yeah, I'm like, again, I didn't feel overly terrified because I'm still trying to process what I'm actually seeing. Like, it didn't really, nothing really clicked at that time. Like, I had to actually, like, sit there, think about it, and try and rationalize it, and I've played this scenario over for so many years in my head but to try and explain it away. And there's just no way of doing that. Sure it would be nice if you could explain it away, but what happened happened and that's all there is to it. When the smaller one stood up on its back legs, though, how tall would you say it was? 
I'm six foot three and it was probably close to my height. I don't know. Like I said, if a dog stands up, I have a German shepherd and she's not nearly as tall as me. So still big for a dog, but it wasn't like super seven foot tall, eight foot tall, abnormally large. So it's still within the realm of large dog size, I guess. Well, not so fast. Very few dogs are going to be that tall when they stand on their back legs, even big dogs. So it's possible. Yeah, there are dogs that are that tall when they stand up on their back legs, but not many. Before I ask you for your closing comments, Brandon, please tell us more about your podcast. Well, I started this podcast in August of 2022. And it's called Tinfoil Tales. Basically, what I do is I interview guests for whatever experiences they've had. It doesn't necessarily relate just to Dogman or Sasquatch, but it could be paranormal to the UFO phenomena, anything that someone believes they've had experiences with, but they're too afraid to talk about it. I give them a platform to discuss. I'm not there to prove or disprove anyone's claims or stories. I'm just there to let them be able to tell their experiences without ridicule or fear of whatever. I keep it anonymous if they want to. If they want to use their name, they can use their name, but we don't go into great detail about who they are because I know a lot of people struggle with coming forward and I don't want them being afraid to come on my show just because I know how it feels like to not want to talk about things because I didn't tell my story for 15 years. And I just, I got a little bit of relief telling my story to someone else, but I still didn't want to tell mine publicly. And I felt kind of hypocritical for asking people to tell me their stories and I'm still reluctant to tell mine. So that's kind of why I've been more open to explaining what made me start this podcast because it helps me listening to other people's stories kind of helps me feel like I'm helping them. And that's what my goal was is to try and help them. But it also, I feel like it does kind of help me accept the strange activity encounter that I'd had. And maybe in the back of my mind gives me a little bit of closure just because I don't feel like I'm ever going to have a hundred percent knowledge of what really went on that night of what really I saw other than what I saw. And I'm always been, like I said, kind of skeptical and this just makes it to where it's easier for me to accept what I saw. And I'm hoping it helps other people accept what they saw too. I'm sure you are helping those eyewitnesses by giving them a platform to do that. That's great. How often do you have dogman eyewitnesses on your show? I've had a few. One of the first guests I had said that they encountered what they believed to be a dogman. And his story is a really fantastical story. Basically, they were traveling down in Georgia at a high speed on a freeway. And this thing come running across the median and bumped into the tires of their car and i've had some other people that have had the same thing like someone just recently said that him and a lady were driving and it was standing in the middle of the road but they drove through it and they could feel the energy as it, they went through it but it looked solid but it, they went through it and there was no damage or anything and i've had a couple other people with similar stories too. someone said that they'd heard that their wife had heard their mother calling out to them from the woods, but it wasn't her. And then their stepson, his stepson heard his mom calling out to him at like 3 a.m. in the morning, wanting him to come outside through the window, telling him through the window to come outside. And he wrote that off as possibly dog man, but I'm not a hundred percent familiar with all of the dog man stories or encounters so i don't know like the i know there's a little bit of stories where people say that that talks to them like telepathically they've said things to them telepathically 
I've heard the same thing like with Sasquatch. So there's just so much out there. I I don't know where to go with it. Like, it, I guess I'm just starting to get my feet wet into the things. It's only been a little over a year. I've really, really started getting into things. And I've had all sorts of stories from paranormals to alien type stuff. And I don't necessarily want to say I believe everyone or don't believe everyone because I believe that everyone that's telling me believes what they're telling me. So it's not my place to tell someone that they're wrong or what they're telling me can't be possible because for 15 years, I even questioned myself. So I know how, what they're feeling like coming on some show and telling them a story too. It's, it's not easy. No, it's not. And it sounds to me like you've got a really good show there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to post a link to it in the description for tonight's show, and that way it'll make it that much easier for the listeners to check it out, which, of course, I hope they do. Yeah, I definitely appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to do it. Well, before we get out of here, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? For anyone out there listening, if you've had an experience and you're afraid to talk about it. I understand wholeheartedly, but people like Vic and myself now getting my foot in the door here of trying to do podcast and stuff as well. I didn't know the whole podcasting thing. I didn't know much about it when I started mine. And then I realized there's obviously other people doing similar things, which is great. I just want everyone to know that reach out to Vic, if you've had a dog man encounter, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to anyone else, but keeping it inside and bundled up and afraid to talk about it, it doesn't really help because you always have that inkling in the back of your head. And at least for me, I feel like it is better for others to hear your story because it helps reaffirm to them that what they experience themselves is also similar to what you've experienced. And we're never going to learn anything by hiding it. So the more people come forward with their experiences, the more chances that we uncover what's really going on. Wise words. Very well said. Well, Brandon, I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing the details of those experiences with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Vic. I appreciate what you do, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, you know, you're welcome. Thanks again so much, and have a great night.